Hello, and welcome to my studio. Today I'm going to try and demonstrate the difference in apparent perspective that you get with different focal length lenses. And to do that, I'm going to uh, set up and take a, a photograph of a still life object. But this uh, difference in perspective uh, is something that you will come across uh, with any focal length and any subject. So at the back here, I have uh, a roll of background paper. This is a full size roll, so it's just under three meters wide. Uh, and I've got that on a couple of stands uh, just to support it uh, and some weights at the bottom. Uh, and then down here, uh, I've got a uh, Profoto B1X uh, battery powered uh, studio flash uh, with a Magnum reflector on it. Uh, so that I can uh, just project a ball of light into this area uh, just to give a bit of a background effect. Uh, then moving a bit further forward, uh, I've just got the subject which I've set up on this table here uh, and uh, obviously the camera uh, with at the moment a uh, 24 to 70 millimeter uh, 2.8 zoom lens on it. Uh, I have a flash trigger on the top of the camera uh, and I've already set up one of the, uh, one of the studio flashes uh, just to give me a, a, a starting point for taking this picture. This is a Profoto D2 uh, with a one by four foot um, strip box and the front of it. Uh, the camera, as I usually do, is tethered uh, into this PC which is running Capture One software. That will allow uh, me to show you all the results uh, as I get them. OK, so let's get started with taking some pictures. Now, the whole idea of uh, this, uh, this video is to show you the differences that you get in perspective with different focal length lenses. So I'm going to set the shot up um, with this zoom lens set to 70 millimeters. Uh, and then I'm going to take a series of pictures uh, with various focal lengths uh, from 16 millimeter right up to 200 millimeters. Okay, so to get started, let me just uh, set up the shot. So we'll just uh, turn on the flash, which I can do from the remote here. Just give that a test. There we go. Uh, obviously, the first thing that I do like to do is just to make sure that the ambient lights in here aren't affecting the image at all. So I'll just literally take the flash trigger off the top of the camera uh, and then just capture a test frame. OK, and then looking at the monitor here, you can see that there's absolutely nothing on there. So we're not getting any contamination from the studio lights. I'll just pop this back on. OK, give that another test, make sure everybody's happy. Yeah. Uh, and now I'll take another picture. OK, so that's our starting point. I'll just have a quick look around the image. Uh, it's a little blown out. Uh, I think it needs to come down by at least uh, one, maybe two stops. Uh, so let's just do that. So I'll just take the energy down by two stops. Like so, give it another go. Yes, that's not getting too bad. Uh, I think you probably need to be somewhere in between. Let me just increase that by half a stop and give that another go. There we are, that's not bad. Okay, we'll just have a little look at focus. Yep, that looks to be the sort of thing I want. I'm not going to be able to achieve a focus all the way from front to back here, but I'm not that bothered about that uh, because, after all, I'm supposedly demonstrating the perspective differences today. So as long as we get an image which is somewhere near reasonable, that should do for these purposes. 
What I'd like to do is just maybe add a little bit more round this side. Um, so what I'm going to do, I think, is I'll just introduce a strip box uh, down here somewhere, uh, just illuminating this side of the subject. So I'll get that. Okay, so this is another D2 with another strip box on it. Um, in fact, I think I want it this way, like so. Now I've put this on here uh, so that um, the end, this end of the, uh, the strip box uh, is just about behind the subject, but only just. So most of this strip box, most of what you can see on here, is actually in front of it. And that way, uh, I will get a gradation of light across the front of the subject, hopefully. OK, so let's just turn that one on. And I'll give that a go. OK. Now, you should be able to see there the difference that that has made. I've just lightened up this area ever so slightly. I could actually just add a little more, I think. Um, yes, so I will just add maybe half a stop to that. And we'll just give that another go. OK, so that's what we had without the strip box in. And that's what we've got with the strip box in. So that's a reasonable uh, starting point. Now, I did say when I first um, came to show you all around that we have another light, which is down the back there. Um, I'm going to turn that one on now, uh, which will give a ball of light on the background. Uh, in fact, what I will do is turn the other two off while we set that one up. So now the only thing that will fire is the flash at the background. So here we go. And there we go. Uh, that is uh, a little over bright, I think. Uh, so let's just take that down by a couple of stops. There we go. That's down by three stops. That's OK. Perhaps maybe, um, again, half a stop up. Actually, I'll put a full stop on it and see what happens. There we go. Yeah, I think without the other lights on, that's OK. Let's add the other uh, two lights in the mix. And now we'll take another test with all three. And there we go. Uh, yeah, perhaps the background is a little bright. Let's just um, take that down again. Give that another go. There we are. That's OK. We've still got the background glow there, which is good. Uh, and it's a little less predominant than that one, which is just what we want. OK. So that's all done at uh, 70 millimetres at this distance. So let's start changing things around a little. Uh, I'm going to swap this lens out um, for uh, a 16 to 35 millimeter zoom uh, and uh, we'll take another picture and just see what the difference is. But I'm not actually going to move the camera at all. Okay, so let's just take that off. And just pop this one on. So remember, I haven't moved the camera. Uh, this is at 16, uh, the 16 millimeter end of the zoom. Uh, I'll just check the focus. We'll just take a test. Okay. Yeah, that doesn't look too bad. OK. 
okay. So obviously, uh, you can now see all the rest of the, uh, the bits and pieces that were making up the image. So with the 16mm lens, that is the, uh, the sort of image that you get. So I'm now just going to adjust this um, to 24mm, like so. Yeah, pretty good. And just check the focus. Okay. Now I'm going to change it to 35mm and take that again. So now I'll just swap the lens out for the other one and I'll put the 24 to 70mm back on the camera. Now this time I will set it for 50 millimeters, and we'll just take a another image. There we go. Okay. So that's at 50. Now we already have one at 70, but I'll do another one just to make sure. And take that. Again, check the focus. That looks good. Mark that. That's excellent. Okay, now I'll just take this off and swap it for a 70 to 200. And we'll just set that to 100 millimeters and fire that. Okay. And then finally, for this part of the demonstration, I'll set it for 200 millimeters. There we go. Okay, so now I have uh, a full set of uh, images from um, 16 mil to 200 mil. I'm going to take those into Photoshop uh, and just show you that they're actually all exactly the same perspective. Okay, so here we are in Photoshop. Now I've already loaded all the images uh, into a uh, stack uh, which you can see all the various different layers uh, here. Um, so starting at the uh, 16 millimeter end, I can just go all the way through and go out to the uh, 200 millimeter end. Uh, now I've actually got uh, Photoshop to align all these for me to save a bit of time. Uh, so you can see that they are actually all fairly well aligned. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do just to uh, show you what happens is I'm going to resize all these so they all match um, the, the background image. Okay, so I've been through and resized all the images. Uh, and now you should be able to uh, see that starting at the wide angle end here, uh, I will just go through and uh, we'll go all the way through from 16 millimeter here, through 70, all the way to 200. So you can see that without moving the camera, the perspective doesn't change. The, per the perspective will only change if you move the camera. So having completed that part of this uh, exercise, what I'm going to do now is I've gone back to the 16 to 35 millimeter, but I'm going to try and frame this up so that, it, uh, so that the subject occupies the same space in the frame, which will involve moving the camera. So I'm just going to move the camera forwards until I end up with an image which is the same size as uh, I started with at the 70 millimeter end. So if I go and find the one which was at 70 mil, there we 
we go. So that's the one that was at uh, 70 millimeters. So what I will do now is just attempt to get this about the same size in the frame. So obviously with a 16 millimeter lens, this is going to be quite a lot closer. Alter the focus. And we'll just take an image. Okay. And now you should be able to see the difference in perspective uh, between this one, uh, which is at 16 millimeters, and this one at 70 millimeters. And now I'll just reframe this uh, at 24 mil to match uh, the previous 70 mil picture. So that was the 70 mil version, and that's the 24 mil version. Now I'll change the lens over and put on a 70 to 200 zoom, like so. So I'm going to put this uh, on 100 millimeters uh, and move the camera back until I get the same size image in the frame as I had before. So I'm guessing somewhere around here. A million miles out, probably a little bit further back still, try that. Just check the focus point. Yeah, that looks about right. Let's line it up in the viewfinder. We'll give that a go. Okay. So with all those bits uh, captured, what I'm going to do now uh, is pop over into Photoshop uh, and just show you the comparison uh, between all the various different images. Okay, so I've loaded the second set of images uh, into uh, this stack in Photoshop. Uh, and uh, resized them all uh, and moved them around in the frame a little so that they sort of line up. Uh, so you can actually now see the difference in perspective from moving the camera, which has been afforded by, move it, by changing the focal length of the lenses. So the first image that we have up here, this is with 16 millimeter. The second one is with 24 millimeter. Then we have the 70 millimeter, and finally we have the uh, 100 millimeter. And you can see as I go backwards and forwards through this that the perspective does actually change. So that gives you a bit of an insight uh, into just how perspective works and how you can use it to your advantage when taking pictures of things like this. Well, I hope that's been of some use to you. Uh, and if you like watching these sort of uh, videos, click on the other ones as they appear. And don't forget to subscribe. I'll be back next week with another video.